Let's talk underachievers then, Sam. And you and I were both there, the playoff final 2023. And our two picks have, um, well, more than a big link to that particular game, don't they? But um, Sam, you're actually going for your former employers in Luton. Yeah, and yeah, I'm not going to steam in at all because uh, this is obviously a week or so after. I can't even remember now, but I was there for the QPR game. I thought they played well. I thought Luton played well. I think they're getting done by uh, a lack of uh, clinical edge at one end of the pitch and they're getting punished for individual mistakes or or little lulls in periods in in games. Um you know, I think at Preston, I, I think the way I um, tried to accentuate it was that Adebayo had as many attempts on <laughs> on, on on goal in that game as Preston did as an entire team. So they were unfortunate there. They were unfortunate at Portsmouth. I think if you look at the statistics from that game, even though they were down to 10, I think they had as many, if not more, good chances on the opponent's goal, uh, even without obviously their, um, their their number one goalkeeper. And against QPR, I, I thought they were the better team probably for the majority of the first half when they scored. And I felt that it was a pretty even second half where QPR came to life for 10 minutes and, and got two goals. Uh, McGuinness with one of the mistakes and um, just got done a little bit uh, disjointed for, for the second goal. So I, I'm not too concerned, but Obviously, if you look that they've only scored one goal um, from one of their players, uh, Chong, and the other one was an own goal. They're misfiring. They're creating enough. Adebayo is passing up opportunities and Carlton Morris is just not really in the zone at the moment in terms of his his all-round play. I was disappointed with him. He looks to be lacking a little bit of confidence. I don't know if there was maybe speculation as to whether he'd move on or he just hasn't got going. I think it can be hard, Ben, to be honest. Uh, you know, I've not got experience of this, but they've been in the Premier League last year and now all of a sudden they've got to find that motivation and that energy to attack the championship as they did a couple of years ago to get that unlikely promotion. Is this squad of players, you know, a, a lot of them that still remain from those days, are they going to find it within them again to go and uh, and be in the, the shake-up? Clearly, there's a talented squad there. Uh, what I will say at this juncture as well is that you've got um, Anderson to come back. You've got Nakamba to come back. You've got Burke, who's been short of, of fitness, to come in. Um, I really liked Baptiste the other day. I thought he was terrific. And I really like Zach Nelson when I've seen him as well, a young player. So I think this is a good squad. I think that they will improve and I wouldn't want to write them off just now, but maybe it's a mentality thing as well that just needs, now that the window's gone, just need to, um, yeah, refocus maybe, you know, if the players are moving on, we lost like Ogbené late in the window, probably as I touched on at the top of the programme today, the top of the podcast today, Ben, um, now that that is all out of the way and Rob Edwards knows who he, he's got to work with and what his best eleven's going to look like, so on and so forth, Maybe we're going to see the, the fruits of his and his squad's labour come to the to the fore in the next few weeks. And tough one away at Millwall, who have um, got going all of a sudden to to look forward to at the weekend. But yeah, absolutely underachieving in terms of points, goals, victories, but performances not too alarming, I don't think. So if you got the playoff final reference, you'll know I'm going for Coventry. And why do they always start badly, Sam? I mean. We, we had the obvious excuse, um, it's not even an excuse, a clear reason where the pitch was terrible and they couldn't play a home game a couple of seasons ago. And then, of course, last season, two exceptional players at championship level that they built their team around. It's OK to have star players, but when they go, it's hard to adjust. This season, though, I'm sitting here thinking, Coventry, so, you know, so consistently improving something every season, you know, whether it's the league position, the squad, um, the manager's experience. And you kind of think that they built up through last season and managed to integrate the new players that were going to, you know, the the lot of new players that were going to 
replaced the essentially the team that lost in the playoff final and particularly the two massive star players, Hamer and Jokerez. And we, we think we can put the bad end to last season down to just ridiculous fixture congestion due to the appearances in the FA Cup semi-final. Um, and I just I just don't understand why they're not at it from the word go. Um, I saw Mark Robbins post-match after the first game at Stoke and he was like, he almost called them out a little bit and said, if there's, if there's players who are going to put in what they've just put in today, they're not going to be in the team, which was... You know, he's got the gravitas and the um, the goodwill built up from the amazing job he's done at Coventry to be able to say that. Um, and then, yeah, they should have beaten Oxford. They were comfortable in that game, but it was still a late, late goal. And then you draw in at Bristol City and then losing at home to Norwich, who really needed a win. And, you know, we, we, we've all loved to what Norwich are trying to do. They're at the start of a journey and Coventry are way, way into a journey under Mark Robbins and yeah, just a just a bit disappointed. I've bigged them up and we'll talk about my 1-24s. to 24s. I always say outside of the parachute teams, Coventry are now the most powerful on the basis of their excellent trade-in. And I'm sure I speak for all Coventry fans. They just must be disappointed that yet again, they're starting um, badly. So Sam, underachievers, Luton and Coventry, anything to add on, Cov? No, I, I think I'd, it's just, um, you know, for, for me, I'd be really patient with Coventry because I think that the uh, the uh, the look of the, the, the side is is really promising. You know, um, I think going forward, I'm just anticipating Sakamoto and had you right having such big season. So I've been disappointed that maybe they've just tailed off the last couple of games. Should mention Since... Ben Chief hasn't played yet, which yeah, yeah. may make a big yeah. difference. Yeah, that's an obvious omission from there. And, you know, the squad is a little different. Obviously, O'Hare's not there anymore. Um, who else have they lost? Um, you know, I won't go back down the 85 Ash um, road. Yeah, yeah, but, right, yeah. you know, changing in the, the, the coaching setup. So maybe they're just doing things a little bit differently. Because I know, I know, you know, how fundamentally he was to the style of play, etc. So they have gone through, you know, another period of change. But I, I do think the squad is a good one. I'm just flicking here. You've got Mason Clark and Thomas Asante um, coming off the bench the, the other day. You know, they've got good players, Coventry. And and like I said, they've got um, four players that have been at the club now for over a year in the, in the case of the two lads I just mentioned. Um, and Sims and, and Hadji Wright had that brilliant tail into the season. So it's about them being clinical converting chances at one end and that structure of the team being being solid. And if they can if they can marry those two together because of the quality of the squad uh, and the manager, um, I'm sure they'll improve. Uh, whether they'll have enough to emulate what they did a couple of seasons ago, I, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. I think maybe this is going to be one that they're going to have to build again, maybe for um, an attack on promotion in the, in the years ahead rather than this one. There we go. So those are our underachievers in Luton and Coventry. And get your comments in. Keep calm in the comments, guys. It's just a discussion, just some opinion. You're entitled to yours. We're entitled to ours.